Death to the False Emperor? Today we're talking Black Legion, so let's see what these ambitious crusaders can do in the name of the old War Master and the new. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today we're talking chaos once more, and I thought we'd do another Legion overview, looking at the Black Legion themselves, arguably first amongst traitors, and some of the only guys who are practically trying to hold the disparate forces of chaos together, and take the fight back to the Imperium in earnest. Under the leadership of Abaddon himself, they're perhaps some of the principal antagonists in all of Warhammer 40k, and now in the new book it looks like they're a lot more dangerous than they were previously, a lot more raw power to field. We'll start out by taking a look over their rules, look at their unique characters in Abaddon the Despoiler and Harkon World Claimer, talk about perhaps some of their strongest options that they can field, and finish up with one competitive Black Legion list. Loads to talk about, so let's let the galaxy burn, and see what the Sons of Horus can do. So first up, their Legion trait is Black Crusaders. It allows them to ignore combat attrition modifiers, which is kind of whatever. Maybe good against certain opponents, like say Night Lords or Chaos Knights maybe, but often not the biggest deal, seeing as Chaos Space Marines like to operate in small squads for the most part. Perhaps a lot more consistently relevant is their plus one to hit that they get, and they get that either on the charge, or if they happen to be shooting at the closest unit that they have available to target. The plus one to hit is really quite a nice buff to be honest, pretty reliable extra damage output, though it does mean that the Legion's going to favour some careful positioning, making sure that their targets are either the closest, or that they're the ones that are doing the charging and not getting charged. It does make them want to play a little aggressively though. Plus one to hit is going to be a bit more relevant on some things than others, it does mean that characters and things won't be getting the same buff that the rest of the Legion will be getting, if they're already hitting on 2s they're not likely to be hitting better. Anything hitting on 3s is great though, and if there's anything that happens to be hitting on 4s then they'll appreciate it even more, so it's quite good with things like Power Fists or Chain Fists. Overall though, as traits go, I do think it's pretty solid, and it does hold its own with the other Legions. Next up they have a unique secondary objective, that's a unique Shadow Operations one called the Spoiled Dominions, and the aim of the game is to try and do an action on as many objectives as possible, infantry and bikers can do it, and it happens at the end of the movement to the start of your next command phase, so they do need to survive on the objective. If they complete it, then they get 4 victory points, or just the 1 if it was in your deployment zone. And then after that, enemy units have a bit of a harder time doing their own actions on the same objectives, if they happen to take it back. Overall, in terms of power for secondary objectives, I think it's kind of middling. With a really big tough infantry unit, something like Terminators, you might well be able to do this on multiple different objectives, and survive to do so. In general though, I think if the game is somewhat balanced, you might struggle to get it done on any more than two objectives in the midfield, depending on exactly what map you're playing. Maybe it could be okay for a fairly reliable 9 victory points, might be a little bit trickier to get more than that though. Then we come to the stratagems, and the Black Legion have 8 unique ones, some of them are good, some of them I think are a bit underwhelming. A lot of them do cost 2 command points as well, which isn't the most helpful in Nephilim. First up for 2 CP we've got Bringers of Despair, this one's a Terminator one in your opponent's fight phase, and it means a Terminator unit gets plus 1 attack and can fight first. If your opponent's charged, that means that this could be a way of interrupting if they've already fought with something else potentially, and to get that and a plus 1 attack to boot isn't the worst to be honest. It's almost like a boosted interrupt if your opponent has charged multiple things, the 2 command points get you to fight and also fight even harder. For 2 CP there's Tip of the Spear, this one is if no units are in engagement range, then any core character or demonkin unit that's closest to the foe gets to re-roll their charges, and gets an extra AP-1 if they're either on an objective or in the enemy deployment zone. For me, I think that's a little bit pricey for what you get from it. Really, you need to be making use of both parts of that, and I think it's actually not going to be all that common that both parts are massively meaningful. Maybe something like a fast-moving unit of possessed with a long charge and AP-2 claws, that could be okay, I suppose but I do feel like it's perhaps one that's kind of situational, and not one to use every single game. For two command points, Hatred Unbound gives one core unit within 18 inches of the Warlord all three wanton rules at once. Exploding sixes on all of your attacks isn't bad, but for two command points it isn't amazing either. You will already be getting exploding sixes on something already. I guess maybe it might be most helpful if you happen to be something that's really fighty and you want the wanton slaughter rule earlier. But even then, I think for two command points for exploding sixes, it's not enormously overwhelming, even on something that's really big. Next up, Lord of the Isicarion is an interesting one. Your named warlord gets an extra Black Legion trait, and it can't be named characters or demons. This one's often okay, but it's not going to be relevant if you're running Abaddon the Despoiler, and I think a lot of Black Legion lists will. 
Otherwise, it's a possibility and could give you a bit more flexible when assigning traits and things. Even just giving them the command point farming one might not be the worst. Next up, and I think perhaps the single best stratagem out of the lot, is one command point confluence of traitors. This one allows any one of your units to gain another legion trait for the turn, and it's one use only. Basically, that gives you the option to hand out some seriously powerful special rules, but you have to choose exactly when in the battle it's going to happen. I think perhaps the biggest deal might be advance and charge from red corsairs, giving you massively more threat range than your opponent might expect. I've seen that used to good effect on Abaddon himself. If the extra d6 inches makes the difference between him making a charge or not, then it could be absolutely game-changing with all the damage he can do. Otherwise, 4v rolls to hit a mortal wound protection from word bearers isn't bad, or fights in death from creations of bile. Next up for 2cp, there's Unrelenting Onslaught. A unit can ignore any move or charge penalties, and can charge after falling back. I feel like this is the sort of one that would be a lot more worth it at one command point rather than two. Still though, if it makes the difference between a key combat happening and not happening, then it could still be two command points well invested. Being able to access fall back and charge isn't terrible, even if it does cost a lot. Next up for 3 TP, there's Vengeful Skies. This one's one of those orbital beam attack type things. In the command phase, you nominate a point on the board, and in the next command phase, you nominate another within 12 inches, and units across the line take D3 mortal wounds on the roll of a 3+, plus, plus 1 for hordes of 11 models or more, and minus 1 for characters. I don't think this one's very good to be honest. Your opponent gets to move out the way, or at least make sure that their units aren't lining up. Even if you do manage to skewer something like 3 or 4 units, then the mortal wound damage output just isn't that great for 3 CP. Finally, for 2 CP, there's Heralds of Doom. This one basically turns your legionaries into super objective scorers. They already have objective secured, but they also make enemy units lose objective secured themselves when they're within 6 inches of them. It basically means that if you have a legionaries unit on an objective and they use this stratagem, they're pretty much guaranteed to hold that objective, even if the enemy has their own obsec and more models on it. It's pretty powerful being able to do that in the command phase, as you can pretty directly trade two command points for four victory points in certain circumstances. Quite a powerful option to have, though still does cost resources. Moving on to the character upgrades next, and first up we've got Warlord traits, and there's six available to the Black Legion. Veteran Raider is a falling back and shooting and charging one, you can apply it to one core or character unit within 6 inches. Handy to have, but a bit situational I think. I guess maybe not too bad if you had a core shooting unit that didn't want to get locked up, but I'm not really sure there's much stuff that really warrants that kind of investment within the chaos list. Next up, Indomitable gives you half damage rounding up. Not a bad defensive buff, and could certainly be layered with other things. I feel like for pure reliability it may be not quite so good as the 5 plus feel no pain that you get on the generic warlord traits table, but I suppose if you wanted to make a super survivable Black Legion character, you could maybe layer this with that upgrade, using that Lord of the Izzy Carry On stratagem if you're not using Abaddon, would make for a pretty serious anvil of a character that you can also take a relic on. Next up, there's Merciless Overseer. You get to put one unit less than six inches in Wanton Massacre if they're in another Wanton rule. Not too bad for things with bolters or assault weapons, but I'd say that that one's probably the least useful out of the three Wanton rules overall. Will be a lot better if you could put units into wanton slaughter and get that early, in my opinion. Next up, there's Soul Eater. This one's reroll wound rolls in melee, plus you regenerate D3 wounds if you kill any models in melee. It's kind of similar to the Flames of Spite one from the core of Warlord trait. That one's reroll wounds and six sister wound do mortals. I think it is probably a fair bit stronger overall. Maybe not bad to add to survivability though, and this one could be an alternative if you already use Flames of Spite on someone else. Trusted War Leader, I think it's a pretty reasonable one. Regenerate command points on a 5 plus when you spend them. It's pretty likely to yield you extra command points to outweigh its cost over the game. And finally, Paragon of Hatred. You get to reroll charges and plus one attack in melee, or plus d3 if you're fighting Imperium. Not a bad combat trait, though maybe not quite as strong as Flames of Spite or Hatred Incarnate. Finally, for their main and rule sections, we've got the Black Legion Relics, and there's a few more gems of Dark Glory in here. First up, we've got Gorish Vex's Teeth, a chainsaw at strength user, AP minus 3, damage 2, and a big plus 3 attacks. Kind of similar to the Imperium's Teeth of Terror, but strength 4, but AP minus 3. Maybe not too bad if you've got a corn mark on your Chaos Lord, perhaps. Strength 5 with that many attacks is really going to make a mess of elite infantry. Loyalty's Reward is a bolt weapon upgrade. If it hits an Imperial unit or wounds another unit, it deals one mortal wound and the attack sequence ends. I guess that's probably best on combi bolters, so you get four shots. A bit of a weird skew weapon, that one. If you're fighting Imperium, then it's absolutely amazing. 
usually going to get you three or four mortal wounds, but if you're against other things then it's not quite as overwhelming. Maybe it depends on just how many Imperial armies you're likely to face, either in the meta in general or in your local store. Next up there's the Veilbreaker Plate, this one's a Terminator upgrade, it worsens AP by minus one, which kind of makes it redundant to Armour of Contempt at the moment, but far more importantly, it allows you to teleport yourself at a core unit that's less than three inches away, anywhere that's greater than nine inches outside of enemy models. Seems like a very nice way of delivering something that's fairly slow to make it scary, maybe a bunch of Havocs that have just been given Abaddon's rerolls, or perhaps get a big unit of Terminators and shove them up in your opponent's face to make them have to deal with them. Next up there's a Cloak of Conquest, this one's a 6 inch aura of core and character units gaining objective secures, those sorts of rules are generally pretty useful, you could give it to terminators and just having the character themselves being objective secured is quite a big deal. The Sightless Helm allows you to ignore weapon skill and ballistic skill modifiers, you improve your AP by minus 1 both at range and melee, you ignore cover, and that one could be given to that dark commune unit if you want it, could be interesting enough on something like a Thunderhammer Lord maybe, that would allow them to hit on 2s and get an extra AP-1, or could be quite nice on a Lord Discordant as well. The AP-1 affects a lot of his weapons, and also the Bale Flamer. Trophies of Slaughter is an Aura buff, plus 3 inches to Auras to a max of 9 inches, and minus 1 combat attrition to enemies less than 9 inches. The Aura boost is usually kind of helpful, not too bad on a Chaos Lord, or a Dark Apostle with that re-rolls to hit prayer. And finally Wrath of the Abyss is a Relic Thunderhammer, Strength times 2, AP minus 3, and damage 3, and doesn't take the minus 1 to hit. It does seem pretty fun, but that one looks like it's directly inferior to the Sightless Helm to be honest. That one gives you all the same benefits and then some. Special characters next, and within the Chaos Codex, Abaddon the Despoiler is just about one of the strongest units around, and even more so in Black Legion, where you get to do his full rerolls on any unit that you like, including hits and wounds. I think he's going to be very tempting to take in just about any Black Legion list. It's 300 points and gets you so many things. A massive stat line hitting on 2s, strength and toughness 6 with 9 wounds, 8 attacks and a 2 plus save. A little bit of shooting with the Talon of Horus with 4 damage 2 shots at 24 inch range. And then some massive damage with Drachnian in melee, usually at strength 10 with Corn, AP minus 4 and damage 3. He can swap that out for the Talon of Horus doing double attacks at AP minus 4 damage 1 if he likes and then has an absolute ton of support special rules, all the marks of chaos all rolled into one, his dark destiny rule meaning that you can't lose more than 3 wounds in one phase, the despoiler gives him a 6 inch aura of plus 1 to charge and re-rolling 1s to hit, and he makes one heretic Astartes core unit re-roll hits and also re-roll wounds if they're black legion. Basically he's just enormously dangerous, you want him at the core of the army buffing other units nearby, and he can always go off on his own and absolutely murder something if it makes sense. I think he is a pretty reasonable target for that one command point stratagem for advance and charge if it is going to make him reach something nasty. Beyond that he also doubles down with three warlord traits as well. He gets to nominate a chosen target before the game and core and character units reroll wound rolls against that one. Might be helpful against something that you want to shoot down with Havocs or something early on. He gets to reroll charges innately and gets plus one attack in combat, plus d3 versus Imperium. And in the command phase, he can put one unit into Mortem Massacre each turn as well to get more value out of those bolt weapons. Sometimes that'd be useful, but I feel that's a bit more niche perhaps. In general, I feel like the majority of competitive Black Legion lists will probably be running this guy while he's costed how much he is. Otherwise, the other unique Black Legion character is Harkon World Claimer. He's a fast moving Chaos Lord with a jump pack. He gets a solid lance type shot with the Hell Spear and damage 2 attacks that reroll wound rolls with his Herald's Talon, and then he also has Chapter Master style rerolls, so you can make 1 Black Legion units reroll all hits, and if that unit that's selected is Raptors as well, they get to reroll wounds as well. I think he does make Raptors, particularly with something like a Mark of Corn, into really quite a scary threat for Black Legion. Rerolling hits and wounds on a truckload of strength 5 attacks is going to ruin a lot of people's days, but even just his 4 rerolls to hit are pretty useful on one thing or another. He could maybe grant them to Hell Brutes or Chaos Contemptors earlier in the game, and then change them to target something a bit more melee focused when you close in. I feel like he's decent enough to hold his own at 150 points, but the Chaos HQ choices are generally very good, and he's also competing against Abaddon as well, who's ridiculously strong and can also give some similar rerolls out. So overall, bearing all those things in mind, here are maybe some of the stronger choices for the Black Legion, at least in my opinion. 
In terms of units, I think that they do incentivize you building Chaos Forces in certain ways. I suspect most Black Legion lists would either want Abaddon or Harkon at the core, though maybe not both of them, as I think that might be a bit of an overinvestment. And I feel like of the two, more people are likely to run Abaddon. The Legion trade generally makes you want to build around things that hits on threes or worse, particularly Terminator Power Fists will get a lot of value out of that plus one to hit, but it's just going to opportunistically help out your army a lot of the time while they're doing exactly what they want to anyway. I think Legionaries are going to be particularly relevant to Black Legion lists, you're going to be a lot more likely to field them compared with other armies, just having access to that two command point stratagem to turn off Obseg is really powerful, and it means that the opponent can't rest safe that they've secured an objective, if they outnumber you with obsec models. If you are running the Despoiler himself, then any big core damage dealer units are pretty excellent targets for him. Things like big units of Chaos Terminators or Chosen are fairly obvious picks, fairly tough, a decent bit of shooting, and nice mixed strength weapons that really profit from the wound rerolls. But also I think that some of the other shooting units could be quite good as well. Things like Havocs with Auto Cannons or Reaper Chain Cannons, both of those also spell out a lot of mid-strength shots that really like the wound rerolls. Chaos Contemptors with the Volkite weapons could be another interesting target as well. Full wound rerolls when sixes give you mortal wounds is very nice indeed. Otherwise, even beyond the Legion trait and Abaddon's rerolls, I think the Terminators are just going to have an excellent time with Black Legion. They can make very good use of that Veilbreaker plate to get them where they need to go early, the Cloak of Conquest to get them obsec, and are perhaps some of the best targets for really quite a lot of the Black Legion stratagems. Certainly the Bringers of Despair one, but they might not be too bad for Hatred Unbound either, or perhaps Confluence of Traitors to get a lot of value out of another Legion trait. In terms of the character upgrades, I maybe rate these some of the highest, the Veilbreaker plates for porting around your units, the Cloak of Conquest for the Obsec, the Sightless Helm maybe on something like a Lord Discordant that does compete with other choices, Trusted War Leader is a nice command point farming thing, and Soul Eater could be an interesting alternative to Flames of Spies, or could give you another fighty character if you've used that elsewhere. For the stratagems, I think the two most important ones are the Confluence of Straiters 1 for 1 CP, and Heralds of Doom to flip objectives to your own side when you need to. Finally, just to finish up, here's one strong Black Legion army list that I'd already mentioned before on the channel. This one's won by Russell Tassin, who used it to take 13th at the Lone Star Open. Five wins and only a single loss at an 180 person event, which is absolutely no mean feat. It's made up of a Supreme Command Detachment and a Battalion Detachment, Abaddon leading it, and otherwise for HQ choices, there's a Demon Prince with Wings, Hellforge Sword, Mark of Sanesh, and Infernal Gaze, and he takes that Flames of Spite one for re-rolling the Wound Rolls and Sixes Do Mortals, and the Intoxicating Elixir, the one that can stop you from losing any more than three wounds in a phase. There's then the Lord Discordant with a Bale Flamer, Technovirus Injector and Mark of Slanesh, and interestingly that one takes Soul Eater, again for more reroll wound goodness and healing himself if he takes some damage. He also has the Gorget of Eternal Hatred as well, really quite a nice one on a 2 plus save character as it gives you plus 1 to your armor save on top of armor of contempt. That thing's going to be a massive pain to put down. There's then a Master of Possession with the Mark of Zinch, Mutated Invigoration and Pact of Flesh. Usually I think he's going to be buffing the enormous Terminator block, getting plus 1 toughness and combining that with a Black Rune of Damnation is incredibly powerful. Pact of Flesh can resurrect Terminators, or could potentially even heal wounds on Abaddon or one of the other characters if it made more sense. Forcing your opponents to do another phase worth of damage to Mr. Despoiler could potentially allow him to live for an extra fight phase, which could be big. Otherwise, in terms of the squads that they're leading, there's two units of cultist mobs, one with firearms, one with melee weapons, and one unit of legionaries that take bolters. I guess the legionaries might well be trekking towards the midfield in support of the other big scary units, and have the potential to use that stratagem. There's then the almost mandatory seeming squad of the 10 Terminators with the Black Rune of Damnation, minus one to wound for the entire unit is ridiculously scary, and they take two Chain Fists, four Combi Melters, and the Mark of Slanesh. The Mark potentially means that the Master of Possession could give them a 5 plus fill no pain spell if they wanted, if that made sense as well. There's then a big unit of 10 Chosen, another potentially good target for Abaddon's rerolls. They fight pretty much just as hard as the Terminators, though are maybe a little bit less survivable. Two units of fast moving and dangerous possessed, they could make good use of the Legion trait whenever they get the charge. And finally a unit of Chaos Bikers, I guess a quick moving unit that could be jumping out to objectives and not being a terrible one for sacrificing if it made sense. Overall it looks like a very solid and scary Chaos list. Perhaps the most striking thing is three very scary characters 
that are all very tough to take out and re-roll wound rolls in melee, two incredibly dangerous blocks of infantry, and two scary units of possessed roaming the board as well. Certainly looks like a solid example of what Black Legion can put on the table. From looking at other Black Legion lists, I've seen a fair few people using things like the Veilbreaker Plate and the Cloak of Conquest. They seem to be very popular choices if you aren't just stacking all your upgrades in melee destroyer characters. So anyway, I think we'll leave that there for the Black Legion today. Looking forward to hearing all your comments down below. Let me know if there's any other particularly fun combos that you've found to run with them, and how your Bitter Crusaders have been getting on on the tabletop since the Codex released. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Spets Tactics, where we'll certainly keep the regular 40k stuff coming, and we'll try and make a similar video like this for each one of the Chaos Legions. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Spets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that down in the video description below if you're interested. Making all this content does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.